All right. Good morning. We're back. Let's see. I'm just waiting for the stream to catch up. All right. There we go. Looks like everything's a okay. All right, everybody. Welcome to the stream. My name's Jason. Here I share with you my adventures creating and learning digital art and the occasional uh, jaunt through a video game. And coming soon, I plan on doing a couple miscellaneous tech reviews. I'm not trying to be a tech reviewer per se, um, but I've had a few people ask me some questions uh, about the Blue Yeti mic. And um, I just have a couple other things I think you guys might be interested in. Um, but that's uh, down the road. I'm still learning how to edit video. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, for those of you who might have stopped by yesterday, sorry I uh, didn't make it to stream. I got stuck at work a lot longer than I thought I was gonna. And by the time I got home, I was just too exhausted, mentally anyway. And I didn't want to be spaced out uh, in the middle of a stream because that would just, that wouldn't be fun for anybody. But anyway, so I'm back on this uh, <clears throat> wall texture I've been working on. And I've got the high poly here. And let me uh, go in the top view. This is the, the lower part of the wall. It kind of looks like a, a floor, the way I've got it going right now. I suppose it could be. Let's, uh, let me try to bring it in a different matte cap. Maybe it'll be easier to see. Huh. Anyways. So yeah, I've got it. Uh, I've got it tiling horizontally, not vertically. Um, so it, it would only be good for walls, basically, not for a, a floor pattern. Um, and I'm gonna just project it in marmoset or bake it onto a a simple plane. I've got it UV'd and and uh, packed, I guess you could say. And I've already exported them to kind of save a little bit of time because this mesh here is uh, super heavy. Um, when I was decimating it in ZBrush, I had it as one tool. And I should have separated the bricks and decimated those separately. That way I could have taken the vert count down lower. but. Um, I mean, I got it done. It just it just takes a long time to export that FBX because it's such a dense mesh. So I'm going to jump into Marmoset here, and see. Let me just get a little, little more organized here. As well. Okay. So in Marmoset, same thing. Um, let's see. In Blender, I exported the high poly mesh, and I've got it named uh, tiling wall. Oops. I select it, tiling wall high, and on my other layer here, this plane is my tiling wall low, and it's. Uh, UV'd and packed and I'm just gonna go and bake these you just hit this little new bake uh, loaf of bread icon which is perfect and you hit the quick loader which I love just makes everything so much simpler I think I'm gonna select my high and low bring those in this might take a minute actually I know it's gonna take a minute because it Dense mesh. And a good uh, practice whenever you're baking, whether it's in any program really, um, 
but particularly tool bag and substance because they're sort of a I don't want to say instant gratification, but because they're so much faster than uh, baking in the, not faster, but visual. You can see everything kind of like real time almost. It's always a good idea to do a test bake. So uh, take my word on this. Do yourself a favor. Whenever you're, you're baking, just do a test bake before you commit to like uh, baking out that like high res bake because you might bake it and find out that it's not even close to how you wanted it or there's uh errors in the bake i'm just gonna project that cage out you can see it coming out over the bricks here one of my favorite things about tool bag you get to see that and I think it helps a lot because you know exactly what uh, what to expect you know everything is is in your projection um, I feel like I'm spelling that wrong I probably am oh where'd my mouse go I think I'm having a bit of bad luck with my keyboard and mouse. My keyboard's been dying for a while, I know that. Uh, but I think my, my mouse might be on its way out too. It's I've had it for four or four years now, I think. All right, so I've got the cage projected out. That's about all I need to do since it's a simple plane. I'm just gonna hide the high poly. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do my test bake. And it'll bake quick. Boom, fingers crossed, looks good. It looks, yeah, that looks great. All right, let's do a real bake now. And similar, uh, to substance you get to in the baker configuration you get to pick what you want so i do want the normals the object space normals i do want a position map curvature and a thickness because i'm going to make use of those in substance painter later uh, i also want the vertex color because i will make use of that as well in substance painter and then I'll enable those. I mean, occlusion and vertex. Don't need to do anything there. Or right, I'm gonna add cavity to that. And then I'm just gonna crank everything up. Do a 4K bake. Um, I usually bake the textures out in 4K because it's easier to. Uh, down res than up res. Uh, generally, if you try to up res something, it becomes pixelated. Uh, so here we go. Let's. I'm gonna bake this. The stream will get a little uh, slow or uh, laggy when I bake, um, particularly the video. It hits my video card really hard. So um, I'm still here but the frame might freeze up. So let's bake. And there it goes. <laughs> All right, it froze on a good shot. I look like I'm a mouth breather. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, yesterday I really, uh, I thought about streaming and I, I actually got ready to stream and by the time I I got my computer on and got got into Blender, I just was like I couldn't do it. I was falling asleep at the keyboard almost. Uh, work was that meeting was just the worst, man. It's just so boring. I, I would have rather been working 
than at the meeting. But, you know, that's just how it is. That's, you know, life as an employee, I don't, uh, I don't make the rules. Unfortunately, digital art is not how I make my money. Although that would be pretty cool. Maybe in the future, who knows? Who knows what the future holds? All right, now we're baking thickness. The thickness usually takes the longest, I've noticed. Um, I really like the way Marmoset bakes out the maps. I say that every time. Come on. I'm waiting for uh, these new NVIDIA GPUs to get some reviews um, to see if they're worth it or not. I've, they're really expensive this time around. I mean, they've always been kind of expensive, but I feel like they're even more expensive than normal. Um, hopefully AMD will come out with some nice video cards that are a little more affordable, that are competitive. Uh, not just for gaming, but for from my perspective, and I think a lot of your guys, if you watch this channel, uh, for for content creation and three D or digital art, cause those professional cards are just completely unreasonable. But the, the Nvidia cards have been really good, you know. Like this, I have the ten seventy, and. It's worked out really well for me. I've had it. I got it right after launch. I got one of the Founders Edition one. Um, but I have been saving my money for a couple of years now. Because I, I knew I was going to upgrade eventually. But that stupid crypto mining craze that was going on made the prices out of control. So I just... That was just a little more than... Than I was willing to spend. I'm not a, I'm not a total cheapskate, I don't think. But I'm also not just totally reckless when I buy stuff. You know, I want to know that it's a good product, and uh, I'm getting some bang for my buck because I work hard for my money. I'm sure you guys do too. All right, almost done. Almost done. I originally wasn't going to make it a tiling texture. I was just going to do like three different walls. But I just thought it would be good practice for myself to, to do an exercise, a tiling texture exercise. Oh, hello. Welcome. Just uh, baking out this texture map. Almost done. We're just uh, baking out the thickness. I think that'll be the last map. How are you doing today? Go, Marmoset, go. I wonder if I should get a new um, hard, hard drive. Awesome. Good to see you in the, the stream. <laughs> Come on, Mama said you can do it. Yeah, I think I need a new hard drive because I've noticed it's getting a uh, like even Blender was getting a little bit slow. I mean, I don't know if that's totally hard drive related, but whenever I save files or transfer files from my, I have an SSD and a regular hard drive, or I have two SSDs. They're really old now, 
and a really old hard drive. Go, go, go. Sorry guys, this is taking a little longer than normal. Maybe I should just close this up. Let me uh, save Blender. Close that out. Maybe that'll help speed things up a bit. Yeah. Or not. Maybe it'll just make my computer crash. All right. I think we did it. There we go. All right. That looks good. I always like to just mess around with the, uh, the vertex colors. A little glossy, but that's okay. That sounds there nice. I really like that. All right, let's. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Save scene. And we'll call this tiling wall. Nice. Yeah, I really need to start learning how to use Substance Designer. I um, I keep avoiding it. <laughs> but I know that you could get a lot of this stuff done a lot faster if you use it. Plus, you can uh. I really like the idea of of having it be uh, procedural. And we're going to do OpenGL. I'm going to grab those maps I just baked. Oops. All right. That. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and drop my maps in here. Normal. Big space, that's object, ID map. Hello, welcome. I'm just uh, selecting the maps I just baked over in uh, Substance, or in Marmoset, excuse me. Position map, Maybe this one. And last but not least, we got the thickness. That should be, that should be all of them. And that looks pretty nice. All right, let's go ahead and see what we got here. Sandstone. And I'm going to mask this out with a color selection. There we go. Nice. All right, that one looks good. Let's see how we look with the wood. Let's 
Sometimes I have a problem with this one. This is one I made myself. Uh. Here we go. Ha ha. All right, it worked. And I'm using my color ID map to select those if you're wondering how I'm selecting it. Like all the. See, I got these are the nails, these little greenish ones. The tan is the wood. And this uh, gray part is the stones. And last but not least, I have this one. Always gives this one gives me some trouble for some reason. For some reason, this one I don't know why. What happens is um, it doesn't respect. The uh, the maps I put down here, and I have to do it manually every time. Like in this mask editor, it didn't put any of those in there for some reason. They're all empty. I don't know why. So like I have to do it manually every time the the world space that's this one position thickness and curvature and ambient occlusion You have to go to each layer and and manually input everything for some reason. I, I this is one of the first uh, smart materials that I learned taught myself how to make. So it's it's a little buggy, <laughs> but it works. It'll come to life here in a second once I get all these. Uh, Maps thrown in there. Thickness. Curvature. Vision. Thickness. There we go. Pretty decent. And this is going to go in my, uh, on the walls that I worked at. Let's see, we'll uh, launch Blender and that file. Very easy. It's like Blender Node Editor. Yeah, uh, you're talking about. Let me bring this over here. Get that on. Oh. Oh. Right, I'm trying to drag the trap window over and it's not moving for some reason. There we go.
Let me see. Open this one. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to. That wall texture is going to be the one that goes kind of where this is right here. That was my block out. So it's going to be between each of these pillars, if you can imagine that. Let's close that for now. I'm getting close to having uh, most of the things done. Why don't we do a couple test renders to make sure it's looking good? Need to scoot this over for another time being. There we go. All right, and let's do uh, override. We want this to be 1920 by 1080. We don't really need that on. It doesn't really do anything. I don't have any caustics in here. Clear color. Do a couple uh, post effects. Clear. But you know what, let's try the, yeah, I'll do a couple screenshots. Let me try a different, um, uh, invite. Environment map. This one's a little too bright, I think. Let's see, maybe this one? That's a little better. Zoom in a little. And we'll let that resolve. All right. And I'm just going to save that. renders Selling. Selling wall one All right and then we'll hop back over here and why don't we while we're here export the textures I'm just going to go ahead and use the cycles. Let me see if that's the right one. Roughness, metallic, open geo, displacement. I don't really need displacement in there. I'm going to just remove displacement. I, I'm going to leave emissive in there because I. Sometimes I use emissive textures, you know, like for lights. And I think 8 bits is fine. Four K. And I need to pick where I want it to go. That's always important. I do forget to do that more than I care to admit.
Substance Painter Files, Script Folder, and Export. And it's going to give me a, an error or a warning because I don't have any opacity maps. But that's OK. Okay, so now we can check this out. And, um, let's see, gloss, that's the roughness. So let's go to Tyler's wall, painter, roughness. And I believe I need to invert that. Yeah, there we go. And the albedo map, the base color. Looking good, looking good. And this is metalness, I believe. Metallic, yep. And cavity map. I will just grab that from the marmoset bakes. That'll be the curvature. All right. Let's drop a light in here just so we can see. see that's a shadow catcher. I wish they had a a way to an orthographic view. I'm sure there is. I can't I can't tell if I'm straight up or down or not in Marmoset. It's really uh odd that they don't have any clear indicator. Anyways, here's a drop a light in there. I'm thinking of um, rendering out this project in uh, in Eevee in Blender 2.8. I think that'll be a little more fun. I'd really like to start messing around with uh, 2.8 in general. See, I'm going to scoot this over. Ah, how do I move this? Right there. Let's see, I'm gonna make this a Omnilight. See how far away I am. I'll make this one kinda kinda blue. And I'll turn the brightness up. A little bit, get up a little. I've still got so much to learn about lighting. I just, I really don't know enough. I'll make this one a little bit yellow or orangey to touch. I feel like that looks pretty good. It's a do a little render, and we want to let's see, we want a local reflection reflections. Use cascades, higher quality directional lights. Sure. Enable GI. 
voxel resolution. I don't think I need any that. Ambient occlusion. And let's see, capture. I want the output folder to be uh, where are you? Here we are. I'll bring this there and I bring this here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just telling it to save a save to this folder. Settings, and 1920 by 1080, that's what we want. All right, let's do capture. Oh, they're over there for some reason. All right. Looks pretty good. Let me try to put another light in there. I think what I want to do is make this one point down, kind of be right above it. I'll just make this one white, make it a little brighter. Let me see, let me turn that down a little now. Then we'll uh, put one, let me just shift D, nope, uh, control D. We'll make this one on the red side, not so much strong. You know what, for fun, let's make this one kind of greenish, slightly. Oh, that's what I forgot to do. And let's uh, sky. I want it to be just gray. Get a little darker. What do you think? Looks pretty decent. We'll do a capture again, image and open. I'm going to call that good. All right. Let me save this again. But yeah, I'm going to. I think I'm going to try to do this, put my diorama together in Blender 2.8. Um, I know it's nowhere near uh, being released, but Eevee just looks so fun to mess around in that I really want to just kind of get my feet wet. So I'll probably be doing that very soon here. I've got a couple more things that I need to do for this. Uh, the diorama, I still need to make a bunch of like miscellaneous props, like some stools and chairs. Um, I want to make like little baskets 
which I have no idea how I'm going to do yet. Uh, and like little files and uh, like bottles. So got that coming along and I will definitely stream those. I'll probably try to do some of those props together because they're going to be very similar. Um, but I think for now I'm, I'm going to stop here and uh, grab some lunch because I'm starving. Again, uh, sorry I didn't make it yesterday, uh, but uh, instead of doing the game stream today, I might do a game stream later today, we'll see. But instead of doing the game stream, I just wanted to get this done because, uh, to be honest, I, I'm having a lot more fun doing uh, 3D stuff right now. Uh, so yeah, we're going to wrap it up here. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm glad you stopped by. Um, let me know what you think in the comments or if you have any questions. Because uh, I, I definitely could use the feedback. So yeah, later today, we'll see. I might do a game stream, but uh, for sure on Monday, uh, stay tuned because I, I think I'll be working on the little miscellaneous props like the, you know, just stuff to fill in the scene, chairs, um, bottles, boxes, ra just very random stuff that you kind of have to have in your scene, but it's not that exciting to make, to be to be honest. But yeah, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Let me, uh, have... great day. Uh, stay tuned for the next stream. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe and like button. That way you'll know as soon as I go live. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.